free code camp JavaScript algos and data structures. We are in the basic JavaScript on challenge 97 of 113. So today we're going to iterate with JavaScript for loops. So we just did while loops in the last challenge. Um, for loops are, in my opinion, more common and apparently the most common JavaScript loop uh, because it runs a specific number of times. So we can tell it specifically how many times to run. So there are three optional expressions separated by semicolons in a for loop. So it's, it looks like this, for A, B, and C. A is the initialization, B is the condition, and C is the final expression. Okay? Um, the initial, initialization statement is executed one time only before the loop starts. It is typically used to define and set up your loop variable. So as you can see in this example, they said for, and the first uh, initialization, the A part of this, they're saying let I equal zero. So they're declaring I to be zero. And then the conditional, this is evaluated at the beginning of every loop iteration and will continue as long as, uh, and will continue as long as it evaluates to true. When the condition is false, it will, at the start of an iteration, the loop will stop executing. This means if the condition starts as false, the loop will never execute. So then we have this second part here. So while i is less than five, and then the final expression is executed at the end of each loop iteration prior to the next condition check is usually used to increment or decrement your loop counter. So as you can see here, I plus plus. So that is executed at the time, at the last, at the end of every loop, right? So you have, you started off I is zero. The condition it checks every time is I less than five. It is, run that code and then increment I. So then I becomes one. Is I less than five? It is in fact, so it'll continue and just keep going until I hits five and then that will not be true and it will not execute again. So as you can see, uh, it's pushing the I into our array here and it would have the values zero, one, two, three, four because on the fifth, once I is five, um, it would not push that, it would not execute the code. It would check it and verify that it's now false, the condition is false, exit the loop. So we are going to use a for loop to push the values one through five into my array. Okay, so we have my array here. We can just simply set up a for loop, just like a while loop, except, as you know, that we have the, as you know now, we have the three different parts of it, so we don't even have to say let i equal whatever. We can do that within the initialization. We can say for let i equal one, semicolon, and then this is the condition. So while i is less than six, I plus plus and basically I is one I will be two three four five and then on this one size six it will not execute again and it'll exit the loop so then we just want to say my array dot push I and that's all we had to do for that one so again it is important to note we're starting off at one it'll be true immediately It'll execute and then increment and then check the condition again, execute, do that until I is six, then it'll check it. It is not less than six at that point and it will not push the six, it will simply exit the loop. Okay, so that's all we have to do for that one. For loops are pretty fundamental, so I would definitely get comfortable and kind of play around with these. Um, but yeah, very useful whenever you need to do something a specific number of times.